Okay, so in this video I want to talk to you a bit about the recipe that I'm using for creating this crater and also about a fairly important node which is the combiner node which has uh, a really important function within software like this. So let's start this off with uh, what I'm beginning with which is a simple gradient node and this has been set to a type of a radial gradient. So that gives you a spherical height map of sorts. Uh, normally it starts off as a linear which is um, a straight down uh, sort of shape. So we're not using that in this particular case. We're using the, the radial gradient. Um, we can control the scale and positioning and of course how it responds whether or not it mirrors over the, the edges or not. Uh, but these are the default settings as is. We have an auto levels which yes technically I could have gone into the post process and done the auto levels there but uh, in some cases it's it's nice when putting something together visually to show other people I'll use an auto levels there so that they can can see it directly. This is then going into also an invert node and that's going the opposite direction. So with the auto levels as part of this, I'm getting the uh, the very max bottom, the very max top in both cases. When I combine them, I'm using a mode here which is referred to as min. The min will take whatever the lowest value is at any given point and use that instead. Because I have two settings here, one is inverted and the other is not. At one point, the lowest point on the surface is actually coming from the inverted version because this would continue off into a peak, obviously. So wherever they meet kind of in the middle, which should be about halfway up, that will remain, but everything else will go down. So that's what min does. We have a number of different um, options in here such as add, screen, subtract, which are different mathematical functions. So um, sometimes what I'll do if I'm trying to combine two different things in a unique way is I'll simply click on this and use the up and down arrows on my keyboard to kind of flip through them and experiment with them. Even though I know what some of them will do predictably, others I'm still not entirely certain how it's going to respond visually if it's a fairly complex set of um, features being combined into one node. And of course we also have this ratio option. The ratio option allows you to control what is coming in through that bottom input. So you have your main input and the bottom input. If you want to swap those around you can disconnect them and reconnect them which is something that uh, again will help people who are looking at your graph, if you're just going to do a snapshot of your graph, it's the best idea to, to go ahead and do that. But um, if you're just kind of playing around, you can simply swap really quickly and see what the different result is. And that's important because again, this ratio here will impact what's going into the bottom input, as well as some of these mathematical options will change the result. Some of them are, are fairly straightforward. You know, uh, if you, you've set this uh, ratio to max, which is the value of one, and you're doing something like an add, well, adding one plus the other one, it doesn't matter which input that you have, there's, there's no real difference. Um, there's only one difference, and that's when you start playing with the ratio. But um, there's some other things that will alter the, the overall response. So uh, just be aware that sometimes swapping the inputs will change these things. So they're combining together, and I'm getting this little dip. After that, I'm going to go and switch into a landform. And the landform is going to add a number of different features, things like displacement and erosion, and then how many iterations that erosion is going to go through. And it's going to apply that. For this displacement, you also have a degrees and a seed, a random seed that controls all of these things. So landform will take any really basic and simple shape and turn it into something a little bit more like a land shape. I then run through this in erosion and the erosion gives me some interesting shapes and forms around the edge. 
but it's also filling this central point with a lot of sediment. So I've gone ahead and I've, I've applied um, a number of different settings that are off from the defaults just to get something that looks interesting and sometimes when I get to a point where I'm fairly happy with it and I remember what it looked like before sometimes I'll go ahead and do a combine to control that. So what I'm doing here is a difference and what it's looking for is what is the difference between the two of them and it's giving me a fairly nice result. It's saying you know this is what I get here, this is what I get here, what is the difference between them and that's that. So uh, because this looks fairly nice and, and fairly interesting, I'm going to keep that and then I'm just going to want to add some additional features around to the edge. Now in this case, um, I want to add some, some details around the outside. What I'm doing here is I have this which I can use as mask information. I have around the outside this has a maximum value and this means that this is going to be used. Let's look at it in a 2D view. I'm going to switch this to height information and what you can see is where it's white it's going to apply this additional node because that's the thing that's being added to it and where it's black it's not going to add anything. So this is gradually petering off the amount that's going to be in there. In addition to this, because I've set this to max, which means whatever is the highest point will be applied, I'm also applying a ratio because this is a secondary input. So not only am I masking it off to not do anything in that center, I'm also masking off uh, how much of that is going into it because I can take that and I can upgrade that and it goes fairly high and I lose the effect of the crater which I don't want so I'm changing that maximum height down until I get a height that I actually like so that it, it really features that one aspect to it. So this combine node is a really intelligent way of combining different features and if you're creative with the use of things like masks which of course you can hand paint or use other inputs for and you start messing around with the methods that are here and also paying attention to the inputs what is on the top and what is on the bottom because remember what goes to the bottom is the one that is affected most by ratio um, you can get some pretty cool results so hopefully this has been a fairly useful video and uh, I'll see you in the next one